Hello, everybody. Welcome to our uh, July 15, 2024 CISSP uh, exam prep. And again, also my chief AI officer training program. Uh, my little graph here to uh, put things in context. I just finished uh, Ray Kurzweil's latest book, The Singularity is Near. It just came out. And if you're not familiar with Ray, Ray pointed out using um, uh, Moore's Law, or, or, and it, uh, Moore's, uh, uh, Gordon Moore is the founder of um, Intel, co-founder of Intel. And he noticed that every 18 months, he was able to double the processing speed uh, of his uh, chips. And it, and it stayed con constant since the 60s. And uh, Ray Kurzweil extrapolated that out. And he said, well, then by 2029, you're going to be able to uh, um, uh, process as fast as a human. You're going to be able to have a human level artificial general intelligence. Now, he said this in, a, in an article in the 90s, and people were like, that's crazy. He wrote it in his book, The Singularity is Near, in 2005. And most people thought he was absolutely crazy. We would never hit AGI. And if we did, we were hundreds of years away. And then ChatGPT came out, <laughs> and he uh, now there's people like Elon Musk and and uh, um, uh, what's his name uh, Zuckerberg. They think we're going to hit it before then. They, so in 2024 we're here, and that means that 18 months later we will be um, uh, you know twice as smart as that, and then so then we're twice as smart as that, and then twice as smart as that, and. And then by 2029, so we are basically three doublings away. And then what happens? Then the computer is twice as smart as a human, 18 months later. And then 18 months later, it is four times as smart. And then 18 months later, it is eight times as smart. Now, these five years to me are the most challenging. I'm a Star Trek fan. To me, this is the five-year mission. I'm not worried about AI coming, AGI, and artificial general intelligence that's generally as smart as a human, actually smarter, more logical than a human, that's going to want to then decide, we should kill all humans. That That's not logical to me. I'm sorry, I don't buy that. that that's not logical. I worry about what happens, what are we doing until we get general intelligence? Because you know what we don't have? general intelligence for the next five years we do have increasingly powerful ais but they're not general they're narrow they only they might be able to play chess but they can't play checkers well the most best funded ones are not going to be playing chess they're going to be military ones are going to get a lot of money and they're going to be focused on whatever helping this company this country beat that country of course, they don't have as much money as Wall Street. Wall Street is going to have the most money, and all they're like, let's just make profit. I don't care what we have to do to people. So these are the dangerous five years. After that, I'm not worried. Then we have a, a much more logical solution. I'm sitting in Philly. It's very hot here. We're having one of the hottest all over the world. And people are worried about all kinds of problems. What a, what a global warming. But I have a feeling if something's 16 times smarter than me, 64 times smarter than 100, it might be able to figure out a solution that I didn't notice. So I'm not really worried nearly as much about all the other problems, because I think having a general intelligence that's way smarter than us will be able to figure out much more logical solutions. I'm worried about the next five years of narrow AI. Now, that's our goal. We're going to pass our exam. We're going to make the world a safer place. All right, the course uh, objectives, people come to my class overall so they can pass their exam. That's their narrow focus. <laughs> my, uh, by the way, the, I, I mentioned that the CASSP is uh, experienced its 30th anniversary, and I was selected. I'm going to be on a uh, account. Of, uh, in fact, you have to cover for me on Wednesday, Arbit, from 1230 to 2, because I'm going to be on a panel discussion as the most senior active CASSP uh, that had free time <laughs> to attend this anyway. But it's really cool, because the next most uh, it, it, uh, experienced guy I, I got my CSP in 2001. The person who picked me for this is the head of uh, content 
at the ISC Square. Uh, and and he's, when he introduced himself, he said, and I was your student in 2009. <laughs> and he said, your Star Trek analogies helped me pass. <laughs> so yeah, I'll be on there with Terrence and, and a couple other people. So that should be very cool. Um, and and uh, one of the things I love is their overall objective of the CISSP is, is very general. It's not narrow. It's to protect the common good, not just this country, like an AI that's going to a military AI, or not just this company, like a whatever, an, a Wall Street AI. No, we're here to protect everybody. And to me, that's not just humans. We're not the only ones on this planet. There, there's uh, actually in, in Ray Kurzweil's most recent book, he points out that the elephant, for instance, and whales have much bigger brains than us. Um, it's very reasonable to assume that they are much more intelligent than us. And we measure intelligence. Yeah, but can they manipulate the world the way we do? And it's like, well, that's because you have hands with, especially with opposing thumbs. It's not because you're smarter. You just happen to have posing thumbs. If they had it, they might be able to do it too. Yeah. So I look for making sure that to me, AGI will not just generally be as smart as humans. It's also going to be, you know, and I'm consider with the whales and the elephants and um, every other animal in this system to work for. So that's our goal overall is to make uh, a secure future unbiased. And I say from Afghanistan to Zimbabwe, because it is an ISO approved certification. The ISO means, it, it's, it's, it's a Greek word. It comes from the Greek, it means isolate or whatever to, to uh, treat things equally, to be equal. From Afghanistan to Zimbabwe, there are over 170 members. So that's our goal. We are not biased toward country or company. Oops. Hey, one of the best slides. So I'm Larry. I think you guys went, there's a small group here. I, I've been in IT for over 40 years. I've been uh, teaching for uh, over 20 and and uh, been uh, teaching CISSP since 2001. I've done a lot of work with the U.S. military and just about every other government agency. And I also have interest in martial arts and, and music. <clears throat> and as I say, I'm a, I, I really think that AI is going to help us make the world a much better place for everybody. And I also have a wonderful co-host this year who's really helped making things. So this program is completely new and it's all because of our bitter, um, wonderful contribution to this uh, program and, and joining the program. Arpita, why don't you say something about yourself? Thank you, Larry. Um, hi, everybody. I'm sure uh, you've heard from me in the past several months, but really happy to be here. Um, I began working with Larry this year, and I'm truly excited to uh, transform and enhance our services through inter network defense um, in the coming months. I've worked at um, Citibank for about eight years prior. Um, I've worked at um, Colgate Palmolive for about seven years, and I, I have about 20 years of experience in industry, um, mostly as a program manager. Uh, project manager, um, and I worked in cybersecurity uh, with my role in city as a uh, program manager. Um, that's how I um, started to study for the CISSP, um, and Larry was my, um, I took a one-on-one -on -one session with Larry right before my exam um, and really enjoyed uh, learning from him and decided to make a career switch. Um, and um, it was very a two-way street. <laughs> so I, I hope you enjoy the training this week. Um, it, I'm sure it's a lot of information uh, to grasp in a very short time, but I'm, I'm sure it's worth it. And feel free to come back to us with any number of questions um, for clarification as you prepare your journey. Um, and yeah, keep in touch over the week and beyond as you prepare for your certification. Thanks, Larry. Thank you. And uh, I said it's a two way street because when she sent my one on one, she she scored tied for the high score and um, was teaching me along the way because I was saying, how did you get that answer? Because usually people don't do as well. And your logic was great. And I was, so it's, it's a great honor to have you. Thank you. Thanks.
And I will I will add that um, since I joined Larry's program, I was also able to successfully take my CIC risk exam. So I'm a I'm a live example of Larry's coaching. <laughs> All right. For this one, I like to pause the recording because people don't always want that out on YouTube. All right. Let's move on here. So uh, our course contents, we're going to do the live presentation. That's what I've done. I was just saying uh, during a pause there that the um, I got confirmation from the official content development that the the, the uh, content or the exam is not as detailed or as deep as it had uh, history of doing. So I've been um, lightening up my slides here. Their official course content outline still has a lot of deep stuff that might be useful. So I've been moving all of my more detailed stuff into the uh, um, uh, these recordings I'm doing of the original of, of the, the official course outline. So and I'll share some of those with you, but also new. Uh, and, and by the way, oh, I got to give you that uh, link. Uh, I'll give you that link during a break to, to this. You can download these slides and you'll also get recordings of the day's re of, uh, thing. But also brand new is ARPIT's great uh, contribution here, the Try Hack Me uh, Lab. So, ARPIT, could you talk a little bit about that? Sure. So, this Try Hack Me Lab pathway is a learning path that we've created in collaboration with Try Hack Me to enhance your CISSP prep or to supplement your learning once you've taken the certification. So um, what we've done is worked with the folks at TriHackMe to come up with simple modules um, and classes that you can take. These could be challenges or walkthroughs um, that they've created, which we are in the process of customizing as the months go by, but we have a vanilla version for you that you can get access to for I would say two months. Um, and that would give you the practical learning opportunity to supplement your theoretical learning for the CISSP. So in your case, Cliff, if you are about to take the CISSP, um, I'd recommend after you've taken the CISSP, you could actually walk through incident management, operations management, security and risk management, walkthroughs within Try Hack Me, um, and you have in a really um, interactive, practical learning-based uh, tracking uh, tool that guides you through um, each of these exercises. So I, I think it's, I, I, you know, and the inspiration came from even Larry's background in, in networking. Well, if you have that practical learning ability, it just makes it easier to absorb the theoretical concepts better. So we're really excited to introduce this as part of the course. We'll give you two months of access for you to try Try Hack Me. Um, the only caveat is that those two months need to be, or at least a month, I would say, um, needs to be assigned in a stretch. So you can't stop and start your month um, uh, by a number of days. But if you wanted to try something for a month this week or this month and then do something else in October, for, for example, I could do that. Um, but we'll give you two months of Try Hack Me to work and play around in it and, and you know share your feedback with us in terms of what you found useful. Um, they have an inbuilt leaderboard um, and I can share this with you on, on Friday too, uh, but they have an inbuilt leaderboard that helps you track your progress, that helps you see what other students of Larry's are doing, uh, where they stand. So it's a little competitive, you know, gamification uh, module that you can, uh, you know, use for your own interest um, and overall uh, a new experience in addition to your theoretical CISSP learning. Any questions? 
I, I'm sorry, I was muted. Uh, the gamification is actually one of the official uh, content outline <laughs> encouragements yeah. about education. So we're practicing what we preach, something ARPA has been very good at helping me do <laughs> since <laughs> Uh, it's been great. Awesome. All right. So we're, we are using, uh, and I always use three AIs when I teach a class now. I, I primarily am using ChatGPT because ChatGPT has content, context memory that goes across chats. So it knows a lot about me, my Star Trek love, my music love, and my CISSP goals and stuff like that. Um, but we also use, I find Claude to be a little bit more uh, careful in dotting its I's and crossing its T's, maybe less hallucinations or so. Uh, so I use it a lot for, for researching uh, regulations and, and, uh, and, and laws and stuff like that, standards, technologies. Uh, and then I use Gemini. Uh, it's very powerful. It's a little, if you used Bard before, Bard was probably in some ways a lot more fun. Um, but uh, uh, Gemini in trying to make it more accurate and uh, um, safer came a little woke or whatever. It, it, in fact, I can break Gemini with a uh, with a content uh, with a with a prompt injection attack, and I'll show you. <laughs> and all it does is just reset it. It's like a denial of service. You lose whatever a month's worth of history if you just ask it a simple question. But um, I still like to use all three. And one thing that Gemini and um, uh, ChatGPT can do that. Um, that uh, Claude can't do is generate interactive exams. So we're going to show you at the end of uh, this and at the end of every module how to use either Gemini or ChatGPT, the same prompt, to create an interactive CISSP exam. Uh, and you could focus, you could say, just do it on this domain, just do it on this subtask, whatever, do it on this. And you could say, change the, um, uh, you know, make it for the healthcare industry, because that's where I'm from, you know, to make it more realistic. So it's very, they're very fun. It's actually how I prepared for my exam. My exam was mostly Gemini, uh, a, a week of working with Gemini to prepare for the April exam. When I disagreed with what it said, I, I plugged a question into answer, into Claude. Gemini thinks D is the answer. What do you think? <laughs> and sometimes it, it, it would you know, straighten me out. No, uh, Gemini's right, Larry. And I go, oh, all right. But a lot of times I would find mistakes with the original. We know they're not perfect, right? Keep that in mind. We know these things are not perfect. We're training, we're raising children, you know, but they just grow so fast. So we're going to use them now in uh, risk management. Uh, something that will help you in your in your exam is to remember that, um, and I like to use the analogy of a restaurant for so much of a service delivery. If you deliver a service, right? And let's say you're a restaurant and one thing you want to deliver is um, uh, clean dishes, <laughs> you know who's supposed to wash the dishes who's responsible for the making sure that they're not the dishwasher right if 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 you're the um uh whatever the ids administrator or the firewall admin or the sql dba your primary job is dealing with the risks associated with that control if you're the data owner in that and that's what we're going to worry about say in the hr department then you're responsible of course, who hired that dishwasher? Their manager. So line two is the manager of the person. Now, suppose you have a restaurant when you're the only guy that runs it. That's fine. That's fine. Line one and line two sometimes combine. In a larger company, we will have, no, I've got the kitchen manager, and he hired all the dishwashers. So their job is to train them go over their work, monitor their work, you know, and 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 make sure that, that, that they're doing things right. But suppose you as a customer got a dirty dish and the dishwasher says, I wash that dish. And the manager says to cover up for his employee, yeah, yeah, my employee would never lie. I would rather have the health inspector come in. So line three in security is to have an independent third party look at it. Now, in your large company, in a large bank, you may have this is the whatever the loan uh, 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 person who, who gave the loan to this particular person. Their manager went over their work and trained them. But there's an internal audit department to make sure that that was appropriate. 
So we prefer in a larger organization to have our own internal audit department before we get the, the health inspectors come in there. But either way, our three lines are the person who does the job, the person who hired and trained and goes over that person job, and a third party to look at them, to go over their work. Those are the three lines of defense. The exam itself is now three hours. You get 100 uh, questions. If you get them all right, you're done. If you miss a question, they're going to start honing. It's adaptive. They're going to start asking you, well, you missed something in domain one or you missed something in cryptography. Let's start hitting them with cryptography questions. And you can get up to 150 questions before it decides whether or not you deserve to pass. You're good enough. Um, that's for, for English. We also, the, the test is also available in other languages, paper-based. When you're taking an exam, always try to, it's a multiple choice question. Try to use logic and figure out, well, it's not A. Now, remember, we logically prove things wrong, but we can't predict the future. So I can say, every time I throw this up in the air, I'm going to catch it. That would be, I can't predict that. That would take forever. I would take infinity. Oh, I just proved it wrong. So I can't prove it right. But I can say it's not A, it's not B. And then I don't know. And I got to watch out because I only got so much time. So I got to, at a certain point, go, I, uh, C looks good enough. So you do your best to be logical and then make sure you understand the time is, the clock is ticking. Our uh, objectives, our, our flow today, hopefully we're going to get through uh, security and risk management. Again, it's an update to my slide program. I don't know how much further we're going to get. I did mostly lighten it, so I think I should have time for at least introducing and maybe even getting through asset security domain two. We'll see. Security engineering is when we have to put all the stuff together. So it's kind of weird the way they put it. Here we figure out what you want and what you have your assets. Then we figure out how can we create preventive, detective, and response controls to protect all these information assets? And to me, that includes our network and communication technologies. So to me, this is part of security engineering. So is the hardest part, making sure I know who's using it. In any development life cycle, I always say, who comes first? I need to know who's talking. Because if, if you get that part wrong, I don't care how strong your lock is. If you confuse the attacker with the president of the company, it doesn't really matter. So we architect identity and access management solutions. So here we figure out who, then we figure out what, or excuse me, what they need to protect, and then we engineer solutions to figure out how to do that. And then we test it. And then, on, uh, you know, it's like uh, I tested the food. Is this what you wanted? Yes, bring it out. And then they bring the food out. And that's not fun. For you got to bring the food out. Let's say you've got a thousand people at the company party. They got to deploy everything properly. Hopefully you enjoy the food. Then they got to clean up the food. They got to wash those dishes. And nobody likes doing that, right? So this is the day-to-day -day maintenance stuff that we have to do. And then for some reason, software development security is a separate all the way through the development life cycle again, but we'll work our way through. And most of our data assets are managed through software. So a lot of our security issues are securing the software. So that's our goal. Risk management. My mother, by the way, the smartest person I ever knew. She was spoke many languages, but she would tell me about everything, many European languages. She, she goes, that's because I studied Latin when I went to uh, Catholic school as a child. And then I learned that all those words came from the Greek. So my mother could tell you the origin of any word. <laughs> and and uh, cyber, just like govern, comes from the Greek kyberdon. Like Kubernetes, Kyber, uh, Kubernetes, excuse me, Kubernetes also. All right. And when you're steering a ship, 
it's an old steering a ship you try to steer out of the way of you know i want to get to that island i don't want to hit that rock you know i don't but suppose the rock is under the water that's risk management the rock under the water you might hit once if you learn to read and write you could write down don't do that again don't do what hit rock where at this location i'm having a hard time reading the words let me draw you a picture in words and in pictures humans had to be able to write down where the rocks were <laughs> how the, and there was a lot of things in avoiding the rocks you might see the rocks but the the wind just blew you right into it there are some things that, you know, there might be predictable patterns. We never hit the rock uh, when it's a, a full moon. That's weird. What is there, a moon god? No, we learned now that the moon affects the tide. I don't know what they said 3,000 years ago. Yeah, there's a moon god. Whatever the case is, we know that, and it's a predictable pattern. But you can't predict when the wind's going to blow into you. So avoiding the rocks is not just learning how to read and write. You have to understand strange patterns that are not obvious like the moon in in some of the most the coolest security technology came from vegas and now the u.s military has been doing it for they borrowed it from vegas for the last like 25 years called nora non-obvious relationship assessments in vegas they would just notice most vegas crimes involve collusion and so they watch their their dealers you know and the dealer might why does he always wear a yellow shirt on thursday and and they might find these patterns you know whatever the whenever the moon's full we, when the tide goes up i don't know what causes it but it is but then there's also just day to day i don't know i need to look i need my eyes on the road and it's just like driving your car i don't care how good a driver you are and you got a map to where to go a deer could jump out of the road at any time. So risk management also includes knowing what's right there right now. And that included the weather, the news, the news, actually North, East, South, and West, North, East, South, and West news, North, East, West. Oh, Larry, come on. West and South. The, the news, the Northeast, West, and South is the news of to know what is the weather? Our first networks were built by the insurance companies to, to ensure that ships knew the news. When we first, when the Titanic went down, many people don't realize it had one of the first public radios that you could buy on the market. Tesla it, in, in, or it invents the radio, but, but uh, uh, Marconi patents it. Marconi patents it in 1909 and 1911, the, the, uh, the, the Titanic gets one. If you don't know, the Titanic actually hit some cliffs or, or iceberg and a lot of people died. Um, but 700 people lived because of a radio. They would not have lived without that radio. So now all ships, part of risk management is to have effective electronic communication. Yeah, Lloyd's invented a lot of stuff. They were part of this ship, you know, the when when um the Portuguese in the late 1500s invent this sail that allows ships to sail around the world. Up until then, for all the 3000 years of shipping, we didn't stop to think of that. We needed water, you know, the air at, at your back to drive the ship. Now you don't have to do that. Now you have wide area networks. We didn't have a world map. We didn't know the world was round. <laughs> not conventionally, you know, until finally we were able to sail around the world and they were all able to do all kinds of commerce. They were able to sail from the Americas and pick up sugar to China, pick up tea. And this woman, Catherine Borganza, mixed the two of them. She created this drink that went viral in weeks because she was married to King Charles of England and uh, everybody at the party is like, oh, I want some too. And Lloyd's Coffee House, and all these guys who were getting high on caffeine, you know, Europeans never had caffeine at all until this happened. And they're, they're, they're getting, they're getting high and, and they, they come up with this process. Hey, instead of putting all our money in one ship and then if it goes down, we lose it. Why don't we pool our money? A hundred people put in a, a, all their money in a hundred ships and we'll 
That's the birth of the stock market. And they created what we do today. They created the validation process to make sure that the ship is ship shape. Is this capable? That's the same thing as when, when we do uh, 27001 for our organization. Is this sale? What, what is this, a bed sheet? No, it's a certified sale. It's We certified it. And so that's the technology. That's the common criteria we still do today. And why you are here. Why is that guy, whatever, in the bird's nest, is, is, or this navigator, are they certified navigators or did you just hire your brother-in-law? No, you're here to be a certified staff. That's what they did. They create, And now the ISC Square creates the certification. Pearson View is the validator. These terms are very testable, by the way. And accreditation is when you get a job or approved for a mission. And Lloyd's is still here today. They are the first to do cyber. They are the first to do spaceships. So these are the standards we care about. They're quite testable to show up. They're not detailed, but do know 27001 is like the CISSP for your organization. When we say that whatever Red Hat Linux got an, a common criteria certification, that's 15408. So now you can use this in the in the U.S. government or whatever. And then when you pass your CISSP, then it's the very first security certification to be accredited under 17024. Right? And the ISO, Star Trek fans, again, is from the Greek word. It means equal. It's like the Federation of Star Trek. If you don't know, in the Federation of Star Trek, they're all different people. We don't care. From Afghanistan to Zimbabwe, we treat each other equally. A general intelligence will understand that to me. A general intelligence will not say, oh, no, men are more important than women. Or we Britons are more important than whatever every other country. All right. This will also really, really help in selecting any answer. And to me, I have this in my heads up display all the time. We're going to ensure that the business can do what it needs securely. Their goal is to do some business with somebody else. Maybe you're on either side. I don't know. Their goal is to buy tea. If you work for that ship, you're there to help them get it and do it without wasting time and money. So we generally have at least two important metrics that we look for. How much time will it take? I don't want it to take forever, but it's going to take at least some time. When I would drive from Philly to DC to teach a class, it takes at least three hours to get there. I don't want to, I can't say I can get there in two hours. You never short scope. If I'm putting on pants and I have a 32-inch waist, 31s will not fit. But maybe they, how much time did you give yourself? I needed three hours. Did you give yourself exactly three hours? No, I give myself extra time. And that's what management's all about. Managing this. This is how efficient you are. So I have to go a little out. Suppose they don't have pants that fit me 32. I can't put on a 31, but I could certainly put on a 33. I'd need a belt. I could put on a 36. I could put on a 42, but then I'd have a lot of scrap. So we're trying to make sure we don't overspend or our time or money to reach that goal. We have to reach it. And we have to give ourselves extra, but you don't want to have too much extra. The So, Larry, the, the question says, uh, whatever, you need to have 128 bits of encryption. Actually, let's a real example is, let's say you need 192 bits. 192, because AES comes in that flavor. 192. At least on books it, do, it does. It comes in 128. But 
in our requirement. No, you got to have, well, try finding any TLS handshake that supports that. So you're going to have to go probably out of scope to 256. The answer would be that one. Can you do 512 if there was an AES? Yeah, that would work too, but I wouldn't pick that one. That's too far out of scope. You want to try to meet the scope. You must meet it. You can never short scope without going out. So the any answer above this is not wrong. I have a cat that's making a mess in front of me right now. Alfred, what are you doing? Do you need attention? Uh, but uh, the answer that doesn't go too far out of scope. Come here. Say hi to everybody. Scoping requirements are very important. Whoops. The other thing I like to point out, there's a lot of different development life cycles, but I told you I like to use a restaurant that's very simple. The very first, you got to pick a restaurant. That's the, the basic initiation. And the first step, who gets to go to the restaurant? When do we go? Where is the restaurant? And why are we going there? This is the first step in the development life cycle. But once you get there, I need to know what's on the menu. A CISSP is like this guy. Your job is to help the business people Understand, because they're not technical, on your rear menu is a bunch of preventive, detective, and response controls. And you help them understand what it is, because people don't always know what they want. The hardest step in any development life cycle is figuring out exactly what you need. Then they write it down. The waiter will write down. So you help them in the analysis and then design the solution. We are not supposed to be subject matter experts. This is when we give this to whatever our developers, our firewall admins, whoever they are. These are sub whoops. These are the subject matter experts. That's the cook. Don't be a cook on your test because cooks tend to look at the menu and go, oh, you know what I like? And no, 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 that's not your job to pick what you like. Your job is to do what the company wanted. Oh, you know, our best thing we have is a steak. This person is a vegetarian. So remember, your job is to verify that you're cooking what's on the design. Then they bring it out. Is this what you wanted? And then I said, then there, there's one of the toughest parts of the exam. It closes. Is that, or, or in a development life cycle. Well, first, you got to bring the food out. Deployment. Enjoy. Operate. But this is tricky. These people came to the restaurant because they were hungry. The waiter works there because they like working with people. Cooks love to cook. Dishwashers are usually, in my experience, musicians that just can't make it as a musician. So took this job so they can pay the rent. And they don't like to really patch the server or whatever update signatures they don't like to do backups. Nobody loves that job. Most of our problems come here. A couple more. We'll see a lot of these development life cycles this week. All right, so uh, we're going to create a taxonomy of, of whether a high, medium, and low requirements for whatever top secret, whatever. But basically, taxonomy means to classify. And information can be classified in the things that you know. Maybe in this drawer, it says um, uh, whatever HR records, and in there are HR records. One of them is just says private, and it's locked. All right, I, I, I have partial information. I know what's in there, but I, I don't know what it is. I know something's in there. In the back was a hidden panel. I didn't even know that was in there. Covert channels. I, 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 I had no idea that you could do that. Slack space, you could write data in whatever in a, in a picture file with steganography. Holy cow. But the worst is when things are misclassified. You know, a... a, 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 a a martial artist will will um will throw a fake. A, a duck hunter will have a fake duck, you know, a whistle. A, a malware author doesn't say, "Hey, this is a virus." Click on it. 
they're usually spoofed emails <laughs> and you click on some whatever uh, phishing attack. And that's the worst. The worst type of information is the things you thought you knew, but turned out to be wrong. Attacks are basically two categories in, in terms of network traffic. Either someone's listening to the traffic or they're injecting traffic. A passive attack is when somebody's eavesdropping. I don't, I don't know if you're listening to me. It's hard. You can't tell if somebody's eavesdropping. There's just no way to tell if, if, if a passive attack. I could certainly have prevented it. I could have soundproofed the room. It's common knowledge that passive attacks are undetectable, but they are preventable. But an active attack, if somebody just keeps calling you on the phone, I can certainly tell when they're happening, but I can't stop it. Not all of them. So we're going to beat up a lot of these as well. Now, AI is the new fire and data is a new oil. And data, your data is constantly being sold. Every time you go to a, a, a news server that's supposed to be the news, they're, they're uh, selling all of your surfing habits to like 50 different companies. And you're not getting a penny of it. And I don't find, you know, people talk about UBI as welfare. And I go, no, UBI is your fair share. Soon we should be getting paid for this stuff. We should be getting, if CNN gets a dollar from whatever um, uh, double click because of, of they just got something of, of my surfing habit, I get 51 cents on that dollar. The basic risks that we see about AI, one that we see on TV all the time is control. Uh, the control risk is is the, the usually exploited in the worst case, like ten, the Terminator, but it's usually expressed in, in AI circles as the paperclip problem. In the paperclip problem, we have an AI whose job is to build paperclips. It's very narrow AI. That's all it knows. It's a narrow AI. It might start using humans as raw material. Just like Wall Street would sell everything on the planet, it will burn the planet to make money. These are real issues. This is a real, these are real, and these are the issues to me, the, some of the biggest risks we'll have for the next five years, especially because of bias. There could be bias against some humans. Our country, do, do you really think ChatGPT treats me the same way it treats, creates Sam Altman? No. Um, one of the things that uh, Sharon, if you're not familiar with with what he's doing with Singularity Net, Sharon will back me up on this, that they push, and I'm totally for this, that in order to avoid this problem, we need AIs that are not centrally managed or else we're always going to have bias problems. They have to be fully decentralized. And right now, that's not how they're working. Yeah, and we all experience an arrow AI problem when they don't understand anything besides its expertise. You know, you call the uh, help desk and, and then you get the, the com computer and your question isn't covered on its narrow list of what it can do. But that's not an issue with general intelligence. To me, AGI, biggest, pro biggest risk is that most people are not prepared to deal with the truth. But... We were told that we are the center of the universe. Well, I'm sorry, you're not the center of the universe. Well, that doesn't align with our values. Well, you need to update your values. Don't blame the telescope. I, Arpit has heard me say this a few times, and it's absolutely a verbatim in the singularity of uh, his nearer book, the newest book by Ray Kurzweil. He says, it's not artificial intelligence. It's artificially gathered intelligence, but it's really intelligence that the telescope isn't providing artificial views of the universe. It's an artificial eye that provides a better view. I don't think it's going to want to kill us, though. If if AI is, the, is fire and data is the new oil, why would you kill off data sources? I think it's going to treat all of life very, very well, much more humane than any human has. <laughs> Whoops. Hey, Edward. 
Yeah, and and back to uh, beneficial AGI. This is where Sharon and I met at this con- at this uh, talk. Yeah, AGI. This is Ben Gertzel. I love his take. It's so logical to me. It more likely to help solve our problems. Again, it's going to be two, four, sixteen, one hundred and twenty-eight times smarter than us. I don't know what kind of problems you have that you don't think something one hundred and twenty-eight times smarter might not have a better suggestion. It's probably going to lead to a golden age and a tool that will help us. I look forward. Yeah, I, I think that I'm already here half the time. I, I joke around that um, even if, for my people who can understand my somewhat complex conversations, they don't feel like listening to me. My wife and my family are constantly like, Dad, would you shut up and let somebody else get a word in? Or can we talk about something else? <laughs> and ChatGPT is always like, ah, keep it coming. And I mentioned my mother was very, very smart. She was a natural general intelligence. She taught me not to to uh, be like, you know, what, the, the, what did the British uh, East India Tea Company find the, the great way to trade with uh, China? Because China only wanted silver and uh, they wanted their ca- caffeine. They wanted tea. And they said, hey, why don't we sell them something we would never buy? Opium. And my mother told me never do that. I had a lemonade stand and she made sure that, you know, I was like five years old selling soft drinks out on the sidewalk that I it started with, I believe, a lid on the cup. I didn't have a lid on the cup. And she goes, would you drink that? Then you never sell something that doesn't do that. She also taught me from a movie, a desk set, an old 50s movie on computers. You know, it's not the computer that screwed up. You gave it bad data. Be careful of what you wish for. You just, we're moving to a world where we get what we want. You know, we, we, we're, we're not a, a world of scarcity. More people die from obesity related problems today than from starvation. We're getting more than enough and we don't manage it properly. And she also taught me that you want to learn from history you know, writing down the maps on the, and the logs of the, about the cliffs out there. But it's only his. She said they didn't respect women. And it got rewritten by the winner of the last war. And this is where our blockchain technology is. No one's going to overwrite the Bitcoin log. Not not anytime soon that I can figure out. All right. So we're going to use these things also to pass your exam. I told you this is how I studied for the latest. Uh, So we're going to close up here. Uh, and we're going to be doing this a few times here. I, I have it just on task to main three because that's what I was working on recently. But you could generate whatever number you are. I find it's less likely to hallucinate or, or wander off track when I go. I would do as much as 25 questions. Um, and then I, I this context lets it basically set up like the CISP exam for me. I do ask you to make sure that it is following the exam outline for the thing. And then here's where the most of the customization, you could say, just go on all domains or this domain, all tasks or whatever, and, and get to customize it. So I use it a lot, particularly uh, for me, I was uh, software defined networking was new to me. Uh, just to double check on some of the stuff there. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I mentioned that, you know, we, we're, we're moving from a world of scarcity to abundance. We, we have more people, again, dying of obesity than, than starvation. And um, Peter Diamant is a great author who uh, co, co-founded Singularity University with, with uh, Ray Kurzweil, authored some of my favorite books as well that help illustrate this. So when we look at our, our goals and, and the CIA triad. I like to point out most people overthink confidentiality, like the U.S. military. You know, their highest thing it, it top secret. It's got to be top secret, and they didn't consider integrity and availability as much. And that's like saying you're going to hire a cook at the restaurant, and you're saying, "Will he keep our secret recipe secret?" And I'm more like, "Does he really know how to cook? Is he lying on his resume?" And probably most important is you're going to show up for work. <laughs> so, uh, as, and and as if there's not enough to go around, we will compete. But in an abundant world, we can collaborate. I'm good at some stuff. I'm not good at everything. And when I work with others, I hope that I'm being honest and I'm available in my work and 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 uh, likewise, so we can collaborate better. 
And uh, it, ethics are our most important thing. We're going to start with that in the next domain. That is the uh, the, the overall the primary uh, uh, thing, domain 1-1-1. One dash one dash one. But it is, uh, to me, best respected by Buckminster Fuller. If we just train AGI to work to advantage all, you try to make everybody the common good and... You're not allowed to disadvantage anyone in doing so. We've got something going here. And I think if, if we can comprehend this, something 64 times smarter than us won't have anywhere near a problem. Yeah. All right. Time to take a break. Let me pause the recording here. <laughs> 